Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Clash of Queens, where we answer your best and worst A Song of Ice and Fire questions. Today, we will discuss Bran the Time Traveler, Sensei and Tyrion's marriage, famous swords, and the symbolism of Sybis. Um, first off, I want to start by saying one week late, happy birthday, hiking through with Tespi. I'm really sorry we, we postponed last week and I really want to wish you a happy birthday, but here I do it now. Um, so my Thank name you. is happy birthday. <laughs> also a week late. Happy birthday. Okay, my name is Anne, also known as Sweet YFT, and uh, as you can see, we I only have one gorgeous co-host with me at the moment. Uh, but Tinker, just introduce yourself. Hello, as you probably know me by now because we've done a few of these already. I'm Tinker Jasso, and I'm very happy to be here, even if it's if we're only two. This video has seemed a bit cursed. There's been a lot of things that have been getting in the way, but Sweet and I decided that no matter what, uh, everything, even if it's gone wrong, we were going to start just the two of us and screw everything that's gone wrong. And hopefully, Nico will join us sometime later, and maybe even T2. So. Let's cross our fingers to see if we can start having some good luck and our, the other girls can join us. Yeah, no, we've all had, uh, we're very sorry we had to cancel last week and we've had to move the time of, of the one this week. Yeah, we've had a shitload of problems and we're all in a pretty much terrible mood, but I think we're both happy to be here and very happy to be here with you. Um, as always, I'm going to start with a couple of announcements before we get started. So first of all, thank you to all of you who submitted questions and please continue to do so. Um, as you know, you can reach us on all social medias and all of the links are in the description box. You can send us your questions at any time on any of them and if you want to make sure that we save them for the video just use the hashtag a c o q a clash of queens um also a big uh, thank you to all of you who have subscribed to hype sweat channel you are i mean oh, oh my god i realize my notes are from last week Last week, you were 150, and we are very, very grateful for your support. Um, uh, as you can see, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, like I said, rough start. Uh, as you can see, I added the previous Clash of Queens installments on the Hype Sweat channel, uh, where it will be hosted from now on. And I also added the timestamps to the previous videos, so you can go back and find exactly the time when we're discussing a specific topic if you're just interested in one questions um, regarding the upcoming videos uh, we have no news for the next feast for bros unfortunately uh, if you want the guys to come back very quickly for feast for bros you have to like tell them um, but our next chapter we read will be next week on December 19th at 2 p.m. as usual. And we will be discussing Dance with Dragons, Bran 3. And I am really excited because Bran is my favorite character, as some of you might already know. And thank to you all uh, who voted on the poll that we did on on Google Plus and I think also on Twitter to help us decide which brand chapter we're going to study. Um, I like the idea of letting you guys decide through polls. So if like let us know if you like that and I will probably create a poll again for the next one or another one. Huh, that's curious because they didn't choose the chapter that you wanted them to choose, did they, sweet? No, no, they did not. Uh, but actually, the chapter I really, really wanted to study was not even in the poll because uh, you, in the in the you remember like a while back we had asked you guys in the comments to let us know what chapters you would like for us to discuss and um, and so the four choices I I put in the polls were the one that you you had suggested and no, my favorite brand chapter is. I absolutely, for the life of me, cannot remember the number, but it's the one with the Night of the Laughing Tree story. No one said your chapter, oh, poor sweet. Yeah, no, but it's, it's a great chapter. You know, it's a very good chapter. Um, do, 
Is there anything you want to add, Tinker, before we start? Uh, not really. I don't really have any announcements. It's it's just before Christmas, and I love Christmas, and I never think anything further than Christmas. I'm just I just want Christmas to come, and then I'll be back for New Year's because I'm going back home, and then and then we can start planning and doing and talking and doing things. Yes. Um. That, me too. Me too. Actually, today I I bought my Christmas tree. And Ooh. yes, and we started doing a little bit of arrangement. And today was is supposed to be Christmas present wrapping day. So that's what I'm going to do once we're done with the video. Finish yeah. all the little decorations. Until I get back home, I won't have Christmas tree or decorations. But I did get my Christmas tickets home, which I think is much more important because I wouldn't get home without them. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Maybe we can start with the first question that is from Sir Don Willie. Is Don Willie there with us? I don't think so. No, I don't think. Oh, we have Lady Sansa. Hey, I'm yeah. really glad you could join us this time. Um, and Joshua Balach. Tell me if I, I didn't say that well. <laughs> Not good with names. James Thunderclap. And of course, Jerry. Yes. Hello, Jerry. And hiking through with Steffi. And I don't think I've missed anyone. No, but not Don, no Don Willie. Oh, Don Willie. Well, the first question is by Sir Don Willie. And it's referencing one of his videos that I hope you've seen before. And I linked it in the description box. So the question is, based upon my brand, the time traveler theory, do you think it's possible that Cold Hands was reanimated a long time ago by Bran while the White Walkers were sleeping and has been waiting north of the wall for all that time to bring him to Blood Raven? Very good question. Um, I'm sorry, I need to grab my quotes. Okay, first off, um, I know I'm going to be a little bit of a tease with this one. So that question is mostly based on um, A Dance with Dragons, Brand's last chapter. So the one we're going to study next week. And so I'm going to give you elements of my answer, but I don't want to spoil everything I have to say for next week, which I know, I know, I know you're not going to be very happy about that, but it's... Um, First, Sweet, I have a question. Are you are you a believer of the brand time travel or theory? I'm gonna say it's complicated. I'm a believer of brand the hero's archetype theory. Well, but that doesn't mean that he's a time traveler. I'm sorry, but I I love time traveling stories. But this just it seems so wrong in Game of Thrones to me if there actually exists time traveling. One of the things that I like about Game of Thrones is that the consequences are always so harsh. You know, in some fantasy stories or whatever, there's barely any consequences to people. The things that people seem to do, you're like, oh, well, this happens and whatever. It's not so bad. Or that. But there are really harsh consequences. It's, it's very dangerous. You have to be very careful about what you do in that world because literally your whole world could end and there's people whose entire world has ended because they've made a stupid mistake if if time travel exists it i take away a bit of that and it also takes away well it might take away a lot of the effort you know if he kind of just sent if he reanimated cold hand and sent him to to him it just it takes away a lot of the, the the gravitas the seriousness the danger of that world and i don't want time travel to exist in this world i just don't also since when does he have power to reanimate people he has the ability to work to green sea but rean no no i just i'm i'm not i'm not a fan of the time traveler theory i don't believe it and i've got uh, a quote from that chapter to back me up Okay, go ahead with your quote because I don't want to steal your quote. Let me let me let me find it. I've got the. Uh... So just while you're looking for it, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, potentially. Okay. I've I've always kind of thought like that's. I've never really searched it, but my gut feeling concerning 
um, cold hand. I know, I know, like Kraken totally disagrees with me, and he thinks like he's a real entity. But for me, cold hands is a dead corpse that is a war. That's that has always been my gut feeling. So yeah, I agree with you in that. And and I know, I mean, I, I, it's not something I've researched a lot. I don't have any like. I don't think anyone really has quotes to back that up anyway, but um, I, I I don't have any proof of that. That's just the way I feel. So if Bran is like the most powerful war, maybe like, I mean, if, if you, if you go into, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't believe for all the reason you stated, I don't either believe that there's time travel per se in the classical sense of time traveling stories, but you know, like future Bran, could work cold hands if he's powerful enough okay did you find your quote i don't know where i've lost it you go ahead and i'll i'll, I'll... okay um i oh i forgot i am gonna put it afterwards i have prepared there's a also i would like to tell everyone who might not have watched it there's a really really interesting uh video by t baby i really really wish she was here today to discuss that because that's a question i really wanted we've discussed it like on comments but i really wanted to talk it live with her um there's a john chapter that might allude a little bit to possible not time traveling but that's that's an example of bran clearly reaching to one of his family member and directly talking to him it's so it's a john chapter of course i'm totally unprepared so i didn't write down which one it's uh, is in the passes with like quarren half and 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 all that group after he was sent there away from the main group uh, that was at the feast of the first man to to get some um, like a special ranging party that would get some intel's on what man's and the wilding army is doing and and he's sleeping and it's basically a wolf dream. So John is in ghost and and Bran talks to ghost through uh, Weirwood and it's really funny we see the Weirwood move and evolve and then the dreams fade into uh the ranging i mean not the ranging the then ghost is somewhere else and sees the army and that's when he's attacked by Aurel's eagle i find my quote or, yeah yes oh sorry he heard a whisper on the wind a rustling among the leaves you cannot speak to him try as you might i know i have my own ghost brand a brother that i loved a brother that i hated a woman that i desired through the trees i see them still but no word of mine has ever reached them the past remains the past we can learn from it but we cannot change it yeah well we yeah not change it can not no no my no no can not yeah, but then like Don Willie, I know in his video argues, and a lot of people argue that that Blood Raven is really uh, like compared to Bran. Like Bran is so much more powerful than Blood Raven ever was and ever will be, even just now at the beginning. So yes, no, I like that quote, and I have another quote, obviously from the same chapter to to add to that. Yeah, uh, there's so quite a lot, quite a lot more. Once you master your gift, you may look where you will and see what the trees have been. Be it yesterday or last year or a thousand ages past. Myths, men live their lives trapped in an eternal present between the mist of memory and the sea of shadow. That is all we know of the days to come. Certain months come, like, there's a lot. It never says, I do not believe that he can go back. I do not, I do not, I do not. It doesn't matter power, like the laws. He says that the laws are pretty fixed. If he cannot change it, it doesn't matter if he has the power to do to see a lot more. The trees can only see; they cannot affect the lives of men. No, yes, no. on that. Oh, sorry for the echo. On that, I totally, 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 totally agree. Um. I'm sorry. So I was yeah, going back to what I was saying before. So we know from that John chapter that Bran can reach 
and can reach one of his siblings and talk to him. Uh, it's not, according to the timeline, it's not time traveling because when John has this, uh, this dream through ghosts of Bran talking to him, Bran is in the cave. And when we have the next Bran chapter in the cave, he says that his third eye opened well he was no not not the cave i'm sorry guys the crypts in he is hiding it's at the end of a clash of kings he is hiding in the winter bell crypts and he says that his third eye has opened so he already has a lot of power at that point a lot a lot of power he has enough power with no werewolf paste no blood raven training enough power to talk through space to his brother that's that's really really fucking impressive um so we have that and i lost my train of thought that always happens to me that's why i, I do script everything i have to say because otherwise i just totally forget what i want to say uh, i want to to before going back to our the quote you were talking about tinker i want to talk about something else oh yeah Winds of Winter, Theon sample chapters. Um, so again, no time traveling because we have no idea of the timeline of Bran uh, we, uh, at that point. So we cannot say it is or it is not time traveling. But we're, you know, it's pretty, I mean, I feel, you know, maybe feel free to disagree in the comments. Uh, I, Sweet YFC, feel that it's pretty clearly Bran trying to communicate to Theon through the crows and thus in a way trying to influence the future events doing that you know he says tree 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 like like stannis go and sacrifice theon to the tree so i can see bran trying to influence the events um so i, I think i've already said that i agree with you tinker time like this story is about action having consequences we totally agree on that and that i like, back to the future style time traveling or like oh yeah you're gonna save your mom and dad and everything is gonna be all happy and peachy and that's not game of thrones like i like no, that that's is, a completely different genre definitely but like to me i don't feel that totally excludes right from the bat the idea of time traveling because as i say again and again and again and i know i'm rambling about that like in the winds of winter i think every star child is going to have access to some sort of power and 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 the question is going to be like you know with great powers <laughs> comes great responsibility. great responsibility oh using a spider-man quote yeah i'm proud I, I'm I thought proud. it was from superman but i know the quote <laughs> <laughs> close enough yeah, exactly. Um, they're both DC, right? No, one no. is Marvel, the other DC. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. But they do have the same colors. They both use red and blue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah, in war we're gonna see everyone having to be faced with a dilemma of new powers and new possibilities, and and are they gonna use them? Are they gonna use them for you know? good evil reason and and there's going to be a lot of internal conflict about those possibilities and brand's conflict is going to be like is it's not going to be him fighting and kicking ass is is he doesn't have legs and he's stuck in a freaking cave so it's going to be about his ability to control events and other people through his magical powers that so, i completely agree i also think that all the stark children are, are linked because they're all works as well. Mm -hmm. Even Sansa, who doesn't have the ability because she lost Lady, it doesn't mean that it's still not there. It's just she hasn't had access to it. And I think that in a way, like the worlds are kind of linked and, and so then they're also kind of linked. And I think that they're also gonna, gonna learn little by little. And I think, I think that, you know, I think what Bran, instead of time travel, I think since, uh, you know, he explains how the trees live uh, differently, you know, for men, time is a river. We're trapped in its flow, hurling through past to present, always in the same direction. The, the, the lives of trees are different. They are root and grow and die in one place, and that river does not move for them. 
So I think that he's going to be able to see things that are going to happen. And with that, the choices are going to be how he can try to influence those things. And he, we've already seen he can control Worg into Hodor, mm -hmm. which is which is very invasive, you know, it looks very cool, the whole, you know, warging, it looks, you know, it looks pretty impressive, but I remember seeing, I don't know if it was a comment in one of my videos, or one of ours, or one of, of someone saying that he thought that warging was one of the most disturbing powers that he's seen in Game of Thrones, and I, I had not thought about it at all, until I remember reading it again, and realizing that he's using Hodor as his own body meat thing to move around, and to be able to explore the things that he can do. And the more powerful that he grows, then he might be able to also warg into people that are not, well, mentally challenged yes. and, and, and be able to take them over. And if he knows what certain things are going to happen in the future, imagine if he's just being able to take over other people for them to, to change. And it's a lot of power, especially for someone who's that young because yeah. he is a kid. They're all children, yes. They're forced to grow up faster in this world, but he's still a child, a child that a lot of things have happened to, a child that is going to be stuck in that cave forever because I believe he's going to be stuck there forever. You have different... Right now, he believes. Mm -hmm. He believes that he's stuck there forever. And even if it's not, just the thought that he's going to be there forever, not being able to walk and suddenly realizing that he has that power with his entire family spread out, his parents killed, everything that's happened, all the rage that he must have inside that he has not access to because, you know, when you're surviving, it's survival and survival takes over. But once he starts resting, once he starts really seeing what's happened to his family and then to be able to see that he can do something about it, whoa. No, I definitely agree with you on that and yeah, yeah uh, and, and reading the comments and comments alexa and steffi um uh, yeah they were, they were just to go back to santa uh i want to say that yes yes uh i agree with you and i, I tend more and more especially after reading or Wings of Winter Sample chapter to believe that yes, she does have some ability to sort of work people the way Bran does on a different scale. But uh, but yes, yes, I think that's gonna get into play. And and to go back to her, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, it's 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 like freaking mental rape. I think a lot of you guys have watched uh Jessica Jones, where the big evil guy is someone who can mind control you and oh, yeah. Brad is not evil, he's a kid and was being left to his own uh, demise, device? Device. Well, uh, device. Yeah, a uh, pretty young age, so he doesn't have all of the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. He's not evil, but he might do evil things just as a kid left to his own wood. And he can mind control people. Right now, just order, but he's just starting to learn how to use his powers. And it's also a danger. You're like, oh, well, I know that the line of the limit is there. I'll just go a little bit close. And then you get a bit closer. And you're like, oh, I'm going to step it just once. You know, it's, it's an emergency. And like, oh, well, I've already done it once. What happens if you do it twice? And then it starts getting dangerous because the more you do, the less you're like, oh, it starts... I think people kind of desensitize to things. The more you do it, the, the, the less, they, oh, well, you know, I've done it. It hasn't had consequences. So it keep you doing more and more and more and more. And then you kind of realize, and, it's, and then it's too late when you realize it. And it's and it's very dangerous, especially because his parents aren't there anymore to, to tell him what's right and what's wrong. Jojen is, is going to leave. He, he thinks he's going to die. And Mira is obviously very sad and just doesn't know what's going on. Plot Raven is just some old guy for him that is, you know, in the roots and God, God knows how long he's actually going to live. Yeah, and Blood so, Raven is evil. I don't think he's evil. I think he's evil. I mean, that's not to this topic, but no, I think he's pretty darn evil. Like, in the, in the Duncan Hags, you, like, he only comes out as evil. Oh yeah, but I I want to believe that he changed once he go into the into the into the tree because I don't think that the tree would accept someone who's evil. And yes, if he was evil and he had that power, he would have already used it to do God knows what. Yeah, maybe he's been using it to do God knows what. Don't don't don't. No. 
No, I'm a big fan of the old gods and the trees, and I don't want to believe. So until until the books prove me wrong, I'm sticking to my theory. Yes, I, I like that. I don't want to believe. Um, okay, and so to finish, because like I said, I'm going to get a lot more into it when we're going to be studying this specific yeah, uh, Dragon. That's about this chapter in the next video. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, but the quote about the quote you just uh, gave us about the way the trees perceive things, um, the past, pretty much the past, the present. It does the, those are not concepts that make sense to the trees, to nature, and we, you know. Um, so yeah, just just pretty much uh, what I'm always rambling on about Brown, why I think he's getting out of the Weirwood Cave, and I'm sorry for you guys who've already heard me talk about that again and again and again. Um, it is because to me, Brown's storyline, like 99.9% fits the archetype of Joseph, Joseph Campbell. Uh, okay, that's a, the hero with a thousand faces. Yeah, and, I know that book. Yes, and um, yeah, there's so I mean, it, it's it's so 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 many things are just the classical hero's quest that are in Brand's story. That is pretty much that's why it's so boring because it's pretty much stripped down of all the other of the excitements that other characters have to be like like purely purely archetypal. Arca an archetype. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, and yeah, basically, uh, the whole point of that thing is that the hero's journey is like when he reach re when he reaches the dark place, whatever it is, it's to discover the difference between like oh, it's a little complicated to sum up quickly right now, but that like human perception of time is just an illusion that life and death are just a big thing they're the same thing in part of the big circle so and and um so to go back yes i mean bran yes he cannot go back in time and he cannot he can time travel and he cannot time travel just because he's gonna figure out that time does not exist for reals and that's what he's going to learn in the Weirwood Cave, like the cyclical nature of life. That has been hinted a lot in all of his previous chapters. And like, I believe that he's going to get out of the Weirwood Cave because I believe that's like what he needs to do to complete. Not that he's going to do something great or he's going to be heroic or it's going to be even a good thing for him. Maybe it's going to be a horrible thing for him, but I believe he's going to get out because that's how he completes his full hero cycle. And that according to archetypes, he needs to get out of, you know, hell or the dark place or the other world or the island or whatever it is. I actually think that's, that's why he's not actually, you know, getting out. He always, always wants to do like a different twist. Like if he gets archetypes, but he always throws like a wrench somewhere in there. And I think that with the whole bittersweet thing that he wants to end it in, which just absolutely, just that word uh, coming out from J.R. Martin's mouth absolutely terrifies me. <laughs> so I think just because of that, that's the reason why he's getting stuck in that cave. Yeah, but again, if he's coming out in something like a post apocalypse I mean, like I said, I don't think it's going to be a happy ending for Bran. Uh, but it's not necessarily happy that he gets out of the cave. Usually in those I mean, those stories, it's not even happy. He gets out and he's shunned and, and, and he feels isolated for the rest of people. And, you know, yes, I'm, I'm not, again, saying that him leaving that cave is going to be a happy thing for him. It could be a very miserable thing. It could be a lot worse than being stuck there. I just think that... Probably knowing J.R. Martin. Yes. Uh, so I'm not saying he's going to be happy. I'm going to say it's going to be part of his cycle because it makes narrative sense to me. So yeah, I mean, time traveling, yes, no. To 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 go back to give an answer, Susan Willy, yes and no, just because there's no time. Time is just an illusion. I say affirm no. Um, I have not really been able to look at the comments. 
have anyone in the comments <laughs> been discussing that? Uh, hey, TV torment versus Aubrey. No, Jerry, that's not what we're talking about. Um, yeah, that was before we started. Um, is Brandon happy if he's living in a virtual sort of world? Well, in a sorry, God, I'm I'm so sorry, guys. I'm terrible today. Is Brandon happy if he's living in a virtual world of sorts, able to walk or fly through others? No, I think yeah. I mean, like Ellen, I think yeah. That's why I think getting out is not going to be a happy thing for him. Yeah, I think you know he's going to be pretty happy with his swell swell powers. He loves being in the dark. You know, we have we have that quote. Blood Raven tells him. Oh yeah, like don't be afraid of the dark. But even before, like the chapter I was telling you about when he's in the crypts of Winterfell, he I mean, like at that point, Bran tells John, like, oh, don't be sad for me. I like the dark. So he's gonna be, I think, like, I think Bran is actually gonna get to a point where he's pretty happy in his little cave. It's warm in the cave. He, you know, he gets He's, he has food and he can do a lot of cool things. Like, yeah, yeah living in a virtual. I think he's happy because he's hiding away from the reality that hurts him. But that's not really life. Yeah. People do it even even in in here in the real world. When things are crappy, you just hide in your room and just do your stuff and whatever and ignore them. But that's not that's not real living. That's not real experiences. So it's not, so sometimes you, you think it's happiness, but it's not really happiness. It's just bottling up all of your emotions and not facing the truth. Sometimes it might hurt a bit more to leave the cave, but in the long run, you can have actual true happiness while staying in the cave is not. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, yeah, I agree. So I don't know if gain, going out, it will find happiness. I'm certainly not saying that and I, I doubt it you know knowing how the books have been going so far maybe they're gonna get happier afterwards I don't know we can be hopeful but yes I think he's gonna have to face reality again at some point like bring something back to humanity I think that yeah there'll be hard moments because it's George's book but you can also find good moments even the first book before the whole world war starts you know they have bad moments but they also had good moments as a family and I think that as long as the, the siblings get together yeah they'll still have a lot of things to overcome especially God knows what a mess that world is gonna be in the end but just those moments in which they are together and they're happy, even if they don't last that long, they'll be a lot more satisfying than his little cave, especially because he's still going to have his powers. As long as his powers are going to fade the moment that he leaves the tree. He's still got that uh, beautiful werewolf tree on Winterfell. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I agree. Um, anything we want to add to that question? No, no, I'm pretty happy, especially because we're going to really delve in much more in it in the next chapter. And we talk about everything now. Yes, yes, I know. This was good. We, I, I, and, and again, like I was really hoping for tea. Um, well, I, hopefully she'll, enjoy, she's, she's, she'll be there next Saturday. And so you can hear all of her thoughts on Brand chapter. And um, yeah, no, we were hoping Nicolina will join us, but we still have not. She has technical problems and we have no news from her right now. So we're going to move on to question number two. Do you want to go ahead, Tinker? Uh, how do you think the issue of Sansa and Tyr's marriage may play out? Or is it a, a non-issue? I actually think there's going to be a very big issue when it comes later, especially because he has a tendency of making things happen that it looks for one. It looks like it's going to be for one purpose. And then later on, you realize, fuck, that's why he really did it. You sneaky bastard. You tried to trick me. And the whole, all of it, like, I've always thought that this, this Game of Thrones was like a little chess game between Littlefinger and Varys. They seem to be the ones that are really playing in a different way than the rest of the, the others because they don't have like their own house and they technically have nothing to really 
couldn't really get their asses on that chair. They don't have families that can marry other people. They don't really have armies. Well, little finger is actually really managing to get all of that. But he's really managing to get all of that through his marriage to Liza and now with Sansa. And most of his plans right now censor on the key factor of son of her, but is on marrying her. We've already seen the the sample chapter of the Winds of Winter. For those of you who haven't seen it, I warn you, it's when she marry. Well, she meets Harold Harding, and you know has that little dance. I really love that chapter. I really like it. You can start. That is the Sansa that I want to see in the bloody show. A Sansa that is smarter, that is sneakier, that has learned her lessons from Little Finger. How she can read him and manage. It was really good. Oh, I and like that manipulates people like an evil mastermind. Yeah, she's she's trying to be really good, and well, that marriage wouldn't really be legal the moment that Tyrion comes back because she's married already and Tyrion is gonna come back we already know that and it's just I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna play out because uh, he has a, a way of really messing with all the plans that, with all the things that I think are gonna happen I'm never capable I'm not capable of predicting him long term really long term because he always throws wrenches everywhere blasted man but I'm certainly 100% sure that uh, Tyrion's appearance, because that's that's why he made uh, him appear like he was the one who killed uh, Joffrey. He wanted him dead so he can have a free Sansa. And the moment that he comes, he's going to include all of Little Finger's plans. Which, I, or at least I'm hoping, because I really hate Little Finger. <laughs> Like one of my most hated characters with Ramsey and Roos and the phrase in Taiwan, yeah. But Taiwan's already dead, and he died by his dwarf son on the toilet. I was very, very pleased with George with that one. What a humiliating death! Just what he deserved. And I know that Taiwan was a cool character, and I know a lot of people like him. But it's the truth. He deserved that death. Oh, that was, yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful moment. Um, okay, to, to the question. First off, little disclaimer, I am quite a Tyrion and Sansa shipper myself. Like, I like them because really? I, yeah, yeah, I like them. I think they could really be like a good ruling power couple. Like, um, they would be a good ruling couple. Yeah, like Jairus and Alisane, you know. Like good, you know, like where they would. I think they both have good ruling quality, so it would be like ideal. Yeah, in my ideal happy ending, that you really don't think is gonna happen. Yeah, I could see them like ruling something together, like Kikas really working together and being great at it. But to I mean to answer that question. Oh, first we forgot to say that it was a question by Mary Harrison. Hi, Mary, and thank you for oh, yeah, your too. question. <laughs> Um, so yeah, to answer that, I guess we must first give a look at Tyrion's previous marriage with Taisha, because how could his marriage with Sansa be legal if he's still married, even if he was already married? So what do we know? <clears throat> um, actually, like one of the first time we learn about the circumstances of the wedding is through Sansa's POV in um, uh, Storms of Swords, Sansa 3. Uh, and Tyrion says, the first time I wed, there was us and a drunken septon and some pigs to bear witness. So I guess, yeah, we could argue that if George wants that, I mean, like, how would you ever find the drunken septon again? You know, like one, his marriage to Sansa was made very, very public in front of the whole court at King's Landing and that was just done in some barn with a drunk septon and so it could it would be very easy to know. Also, I imagine that Tywin being who he is, he would have made certain that either there was no one to remember that marriage or would have just annulled it. Well, I'm I mean on that I'm not sure because like at the crossbow scene, uh, it's right after so so Jamie just came out of the wood and said, oh, no, I mean, I, I I lied to you. She was not a whore. It was just exactly the way you thought it was. And my father made me do it and made me tell you that she was a whore. Coward. 
Um, so yes, Tyrion is pretty enraged, and that's the first thing he's thinking about when he when he kills his father. Is I want to find my bride. I want to find my Taisha. Like where is she? And um, so he asked, um, <clears throat> "What did you do with Taisha?" And Tywin's like, "Taisha." He does not even remember her name. The girl I married. <laughs> oh, yes, your first whore. Uh, Taisha, what did you do with her after my little lesson? I don't recall. And then so he's threatening him with the crossbow. Try harder. Did you ever kill? His, father's, his father pursed his lips. There was no reason for that. She had learned her place and had been well paid for her day's work, I seem to recall. I suppose the steward sent her on her way. I never thought to inquire. So he slept very open, not only, I mean, yes, to torture Tyrion, but also... I, I, the way I see it, Tywin, no, Tywin was thought so little of those people that I don't think he would have tracked down the, the Septon, the drunk Septon, or that, you know, he thought, yeah, those hardly exist. They're ghosts of human beings. They're just small folks. I don't need to care about them. So I'm... True. Know, it's, it's, it's a very small... There's a very small chance... Um, for that to happen, but still, if he's still, you know, if Taisha is still alive, um, and we know she has not been killed by Tywin, that his marriage to Sansa was never legal in the first place. But you would have to find Taisha first. She would have to appear. And then would she want to stay, to go back to Ty uh, Tyrion after what happened to her? Yeah, no, probably not. But I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a specialist on those kind of of rulings. But if if um, couldn't well, Dorian say, "Hey, I thought my, you know, um, I thought my previous wedding had been annulled, but it had not. So my wedding to Sansa was not legal. Like, like as much as I would want, like a." Sansa and Tyrion power of couple, I don't think it's gonna work out that way. And I think, Mary, that um, uh, that for it to, I mean, that that there needs to be an annulment of that marriage. Also, to be fair, their marriage was never consummated, and consummation is necessary for a marriage to be finalized. Okay. Until the consummation happens. A marriage can be annulled. So it depends if Tyrion appears before she's married and Littlefinger hasn't gotten under her skirts, that dirty bastard. But if that hasn't happened and they can prove that she's still a maiden, it would be very easy to annul her marriage to Tyrion. I don't actually think they're going to end up together. I really don't think so. I just think it's really going to throw a wrench into Littlefinger's plans because I think he's so smug and think that he has control over everything. And I just think that Tyrion is going to be the one that is just going to upset all his plans. But I don't think they're going to end up together. And I've got to admit, I, I like Tyrion. But Tyrion has really gotten on my nerves the moment that he left King's Landing. He has been devolving... And some of the moments that he's had, I just want to slap him. They haven't, if you've seen, if you notice in the show, they haven't shown him that different because they want to keep, because he's so popular that they want to keep him likable. But he's, he's not that likable in the books. He's done a lot of things in the books that are quite reprehensible. The fact that he's funny and clever and just sneaky and so entertaining is what keeps people liking Tyrion. But he's done a lot of things that, boy, uh, they don't they don't make him a good person. Not anymore. So I don't I don't think if I would actually, you know, that's the part that I'm not certain if I would like them to see them to go. you know how i am you know that i i know the world is not black and white but there's some certain shirts of gray that just just, just... they you know. help you 
I don't. It's my mom is a lawyer. Justice is very ingrained in my family, and I cannot. It just it's difficult for me to swallow when people act in certain ways and just so badly and so unjust against others. And just, it's difficult. No. No. No, I agree. Well, okay. Just to go back to little finger. Um, you know, unlike Show Little Finger, who's very stupid all of a sudden, and like, yeah, oh, let's marry Sansa to Ramsey. I don't know who is is a bastard. Let's not keep anyone there to check up on her to make certain nothing happens. Oh. Bad TV show, bad TV show. But so, Brook Little Finger is not stupid. He knows that's an issue. He has planned it. Like, we, we don't exactly, like, um, pretty much the way I see it, I'm not, even, he, I, I'm not even sure he plans on going through with the marriage per se. Like, he needs the, he needs to have everybody in attendance. Anyway, he's, on paper, he's supposed to marry Elaine Stone, Harry the Hare. And he wants everyone in the veil in attendance to have the big reveal of her being Sansa Stark. And to have them have to play pledge uh, their fealty to her, but he knows that she cannot marry him like that. So I mean, he must have a backup plan. So, well, I think his plan is to annul the marriage because it has not been consummated. That is the thing. But also, I think that yeah, Littlefinger is very clever, but he's not all powerful. Just because he looks like he's always ten steps ahead of people and because he tends to be ten steps ahead of people it doesn't mean the things always go his way it's one of the things that i like about george he doesn't have any single character whose things go a hundred percent always their way i think he he intended he intended for Tyrion to die and the fact that he didn't was something that didn't go his way and something that eventually I think is going to bite him back in the ass because I think Tyrion is going to find out what he did and we know that Tyrion is not very forgiven not when it comes to his life. So I just, yeah, he's very clever and I'm sure that the fact that he knows that it hasn't been consummated is going to be his plan to have it annulled. But I just, I, th I think that he's, if the problem was when, when people are so, so clever and so, so arrogant and everything seems to have worked so much on their side, they start to believe that they're invincible. Their hubris like takes over. And I think that Tyrion is gonna be the one thing that is just gonna smash all of his plans to pieces because he's also very, very, very clever. Yeah. Or another way, like um you know, there are a lot of speculations on the fact that during that tourney, uh, the mountain clans that have been armed by Tyrions in Book 2 could attack the Vale at that point. And it would be another way for, in a, in a different way for Tyrion to just screw Littlefinger's plans, you know, if his mountain clans, I mean, they're not under his order anymore, but he armed them to be able to do that back then, and that would be cool. That would be really cool. Also, I think that when they're originally married, I, I felt so, I know a lot of people do not like Sansa, even naive Sansa. I always felt sorry for her, and I always had a lot of compassion for her, because she was just a little girl that got screwed over so much. Like, Come on, and all those people that talk badly about her, I would like to see how they would act when they're in love and they were so sheltered. Like, it's easy to criticize, but she she did very well to any kind of situation. And when they originally married, Tyrion was kind of forced to take his family side because, well, if he what did he have if he did not have his family? And she was just too hurt and too beaten and still too naive to be able to see who Tyrion really was. The situation is going to be very different when Tyrion comes back. Tyrion is no longer going to be on his family's side because family has screwed him over. Even Jaime was like the only one he truly loved. He's not happy with him either. Sansa by now has already learned a lot from Littlefinger, which means a very different Tyrion and a very different Sansa will be meeting. So this is really going to change the dynamic between the two of them. 
Uh, it's not going to be a shy little Sansa that is afraid of Tyrion and not talking to him. And uh uh. It's going to be a very different Sansa. Sansa that might decide to choose that her husband is a better option than Littlefinger. No, oh, definitely. Definitely. I don't even think she was that. I don't know. I, I need to. Re I, I mean, I, full disclosure. I haven't reread those Sansa chapter in a really, really long time because no, she's not my favorite character. But I, the way I remember it, and maybe I'm misremembering it. Like she was not that. Sh it's not that much that she was shy around Tyrion. She was just a mix of disgusted by him and and so angry, angry, and and I mean not. You know, like against the Lannisters, that she wants to punish him, but also afraid. He's uh, there's a moment that he says, "I'm the littlest of the Lannisters," but she thinks still a Lannister. The name, the name haunted him. It, it when they were together, no matter what he said, that that name, it, it still scared her. And whatever she did, whatever you know, she couldn't be honest. She couldn't talk to him. Oh, the queen is tormenting me. And gee, she could already see it coming out from her mouth into his ears and coming out of his mouth into the queen's ears. Yeah, but I don't know if he was, I don't know, like she seemed more angry to me than afraid. Like she was angry with Tyrion for being a Lannister, even though he was the littlest of Lannisters. But I, again, I, I would need to reread those chapters. I think she was both. She was also very, very disappointed. Hmm. That she didn't. A, a part of me is curious of what would have happened if she'd have gone with the Tyrells and Willis. Like, because they kind of looked at the beginning like they were going to be her saviors. And they seemed like to be like the ideal for her, you know, high gardens surrounded by roses and flowers and stuff. But they really used her. And the moment that she got married to Tyrion, Marjorie abandoned her. Like, She's also a lot more likable in the show than she is in the books. She completely abandoned her. Garland was the one that did not, that walked her to the wedding and said, oh, he can be also be a kind man and try to like cheer him up. Yeah, I really like Garland. Poor guy with that family. I don't think they're also as good as a family as they appear to be. But I don't know if her life would have been as idyllic as she thinks it would be. Mm. Yeah. No, no, I mean, probably not, but I don't know why Willis, well, who said that, oh God, I, I, I'm sorry, I totally cannot remember where I heard that recently, but maybe a podcast of Ice and Fire, but why is that guy not married yet? Like, it, like, like making us suspect like there's some, something wrong about him that we don't know. Like, why is the hair? Air, hair, hair, hair. Yeah, I'm trying to. I not butcher English uh, too too much. The why future he, Lord of High Garden. Why is the future Lord of High Garden not married? Well, I always had the idea that the fact that he was, the fact that he was a cripple, that they would like, you know, he was the heir, cripples and stuff. That they're really looked down on in this world, and honestly, I. Cannot, this is just a theory of mine. I always thought that his father preferred his other sons and was kind of hoping that it might not go to Willis. Mm. But that's just my own theory. That's interesting. It it's, not, it's not based on anything that's in the books. But it's just the way that he is, the way that he talks, so pompous, so good. And suddenly to have his eldest hair a cripple, it's because, uh, no, no. Hmm. Garland is already married. Yeah. And Lars is his absolute favorite, but he's in a white cloak. Yeah. So and, he can protect his precious uh, Marjorie. In Marjorie, thrice, twice, twice, poor Tom, and twice a widow already. So she's been, you know, married three times. And yeah, and the poor future Tom Lord and... is yet not married. Garland is Garland the Gallant, but lots of people like him. He would be a good lord. Yeah, well. 
we'll see we'll see i i think we're seeing them in the next book so i'm excited about that yeah i'm i'm, I'm it's he's one of the characters that i'm very very curious about I'm very very curious about because i also think that he's going to be a bit different to the rest of the family hmm. but we'll see we'll see hopefully we'll see in the next chapter i i but i definitely think that Kirian is gonna make little fingers plans smash them to smithereens he's not going to completely destroy them because i think little fingers going to be very difficult to get rid of anyone on set to do that but i'm kind of hoping sansa will push him off the moon door it would be a fitting end he would be together with his beloved lysa yeah yeah that would I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. That would be a little too simplistic. Not simplistic, but black and white for my liking. But but hey, I totally respect your point. But it's it's very romantic. You would follow his wife to the afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Lisa. I feel bad for Lisa. She's horrible. But I don't. She I was don't. a selfish little girl who never accepted that things were not the way that she wanted them to be yet did not want to see reality that was like willing Sansa. and was willing to screw up her yes but Sansa never did it in a in a bad like she never intentionally wanted to be vicious and and just then felt sorry for when she and she was 11 not like 15 or so and she never and she never blamed her family she's even she even wants to rejoin Arya and feel sad that Arya is gone while she was all oh my father that horrible man and she's talking badly about Catelyn and she's just still poisoned against she she has no love for anyone except for herself and not even little finger she doesn't really love little finger she's obsessed with little finger because she it's the one thing that she wanted that she thought cat had taken away with him but like since since it makes him makes her believe that he chose her over cat is like the one thing that she'd won over cat well she's a horrible mother but she loved uh robert rob yeah robin yeah, sweet robin yeah sweet robin he was robert or robin or no it, it, it's robert aaron robert aaron yeah sweet robin but I so used to sweet Robin that I just think of Robin instead of Robert. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know me too. But I know like some people tend to to correct that a lot in the comments. So I try to get that to stick in my head. You know, to not get the his name is not Robin. Um. Okay, like dear people watching us. Um. I'm not <laughs> sorry. I, it's it's really tough when we're only two people. Like when we're a bunch, we can always have one of us keeping an eye on the comments. But when it's only two people, it's more difficult. So what did you guys have to say? Um, so Jerry is annoyed by Sansa, but Jerry's just a hater. So <laughs> so yeah, I. <laughs> um, well, she was not only thinking about herself, Jerry. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. She's young and she's flawed, but I think that you're too harsh. They were talking about Rob and and the marriage alliance with the phrase. Um, yeah, but Rob, Rob was also young and he got manipulated. Come on, Rob against a Taiwan's manipulations. He never stood a chance. Poor kid. So yeah, I'm I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, Arya was supposed to marry that free. Yeah, um, that would have been funny to see. Something tells me that he would not have survived long with Arya as no as his wife. <laughs> Something tells me that he would not have survived long. <laughs> um, oh, JD. Hey, JD. Good morning. Oh, uh, hello. Come and have breakfast with us. Um, okay. Well, still, I don't think we still have not, no news from Nicolina. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll power through um, and go, move on to question number three. Unless you have anything to, to add to that. No. 
I'm no. pretty happy. So yeah, oh yeah, to sum up my answer, um, yeah, I oh, so my answer <laughs> to Mary's question is, I really would like for them to stay married and rule together, like rule casserole, rock together, or even or the like, seven kingdoms. Yeah, well, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they'll they'll be the seven kingdoms, but yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you and I are 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 not are not in agreement with that. Yes, but like a big, yeah, big chunk, like like big important rulers, and that would be really cool, and I would love that. And I think they would be just like really good and implement like really good reforms, and 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 uh, like I, I think like she, they could both like 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 very positively affect each other. Once I mean, if they manage to trust, you know, like like trust and accept each other, and and. Um, Although, like, right now, they're both pretty darn prejudiced against the small folks. Like, Sansa is and, and is still, like, very, very proud of being a high-born girl. I think that her experience as Elaine will teach her things. And, and Tyrion has been, you know, like, has been uh, made so bitter after he defended King's Landing. And then he was called the demon little monkey and demon our, monkey yes and now we can't but but yeah i think they can like they will overcome that and they could you know they could make some great rollers and make some positive reforms i i still don't think it's going to happen i think that um their marriage will be annulled and but <clears throat> i'm very sorry but um maybe um Maybe, like you said, Tinker, it will be just enough of a plot point to prevent her from marrying Ari Harding. And yeah, so the next question is from Mr. Tony Teflon. Um, hey, Tony, I don't think you're, I don't think you're there. Um, yeah, I know it's really early. We're doing that really early today. So yeah, a really interesting question. Um, that is a speculation question, and it's in whose hands do you think major swords will end up? And he quoted Widow's Will, Oathkeeper, Longclaw, Heartsbane, Dark Sister, Blackfire, and Dawn. So, since I have absolutely no idea where they're going to end, this is what's more of my wish desire where I want them to end. Oh, my, I've got my, to my, my answer also is very, like, I have something that are you know, it's based on nothing. It's very, very speculative. Well, it's just it's difficult to guess where these swords are going to end up. There's not really much to grasp from the books. No, yeah, there's just one that would have more of a theory on, but the other ones, yeah, definitely. So, okay, you want to start? Okay, the first one that I've got a big thing on, which is actually two of them, is Widow's Spell and Oathkeeper. I hated what Tywin did with them. I hated that he took House Stark's sword and, and, and for himself and for his house. I wanted to strangle him. I wanted to kill How dare he touch House Stark's sword and to defile them like that and give it to his own family. That son of a... I hated him. <laughs> so I want those two swords to be melted and eyes to be reforged. And that sword will go to Rickon because, really, to be fair, Bran, even if he comes back to rule, he's not going to actually be able to wield that huge monstrosity of a sword. And I think Rickon is going to be a wild, vicious little warrior. So I want those two to be melted to all the ruby and all the red tint and all the, 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 the lion and every tint from the Lannister and blah my house whatever to be taken off and to uh, ice to be reforged and to be back into house dark yeah well that answer i'm very sorry i cannot find the comment right now um someone asked us a question that would say like ask us i'm sorry i i i wrote it down and now i cannot find where i wrote it down but uh ask us do we think they will they will eventually be reforged and i was i said we we're going to touch on it today because we we're going to discuss those swords anyway. And so you answered the question. I'm very sorry. I, I like at the top of my head, I would say it's from Joshua, but I'm not 100% sure. And and I know I said yes, we would touch on it, but now I 
I don't know where I put the question. I'm so, so sorry. Um, okay, personally, like for those two, I don't think they will be reforged. Uh, I would really, that's that's off topic, but I, I really hope, like my heart's desire is that the original ice makes a comeback. Like the one before, you know, the very, the Valyrian steel one that I am like, yeah, it's going to be hidden somewhere in the crypts and it's going to play a really big role because it's going to be really freaking magical swords that kill the White Walkers at some point. But I have no proof of that. That's just my heart's desire. Um, I kind of really like, so for a lot of those, I went with the names just like that. And I so, yeah, obviously I want Brienne to keep Oathkeeper. I, that 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 works with her so well you know either her or if she gets killed he has to go back to jamie because that's that, that no 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 those swords have to be back to house stark not house lannister house lannister stole them yeah they no stole okay, them my answer. After they I, I to to stark. give me time to give my answer you know yeah sorry <laughs> No, no, but yeah, I know. I no, I don't think. I mean, I'm not giving those back to. I mean, I w w wait a second because like wait for the second one. So yeah, Oathkeeper, um, I, uh, like Brienne, and then I think it goes to Jamie because like that's that's just that word. Oathkeeper sums up his entire arc, so that's good. And since you want, you know, so I was thinking, okay, Widow's Will, like that crappy name, that. That's stupid. Horrible. Yes, stupid. But okay, I, I'm like, oh my God, it would be so good if Lady, like Widow's Will, Lady Stone Heart. Like, could she, I, I'm not sure she could technically wield a sword, but if she could, like, what better sword than Widow's Will? That's just, like, you, you see what I mean? Like, wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah. What I, if Jamie died? Yeah, uh, um, okay, what if Jamie died, then we would get... Okay. Because I believe that Jamie will die at the end of the books. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't I didn't know in the timeline. Yeah, I think Jamie will die, too. I think Jamie's going to die with Cersei. They're going to die together the way they were born together, but... Oh, maybe he can kill Cersei with Oathkeeper. Yeah, but, um, it, I don't know, I want, yeah, I want something closer to prophecy, you know, like, mm, yeah, then, but yeah, yeah, it, it could. Um, and you know, um, you know, Tristan and Isolt, I don't know, you see that, like, Tristan the medieval, Isolt. yeah, the medieval tale, like when they're, you know, like they're they, they that this crazy love potion and they really want to have sex, but they cannot have sex because they, well, anyway, and, and there's the at some point they have to sleep in the forest together so, and to make sure to not be tempted, they put the sword in between them. Like that would be so cool if there was that kind of image with Cersei and Jamie and Oathkeeper in between them. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be cool like if the same kind of trope, like Oathkeeper, at some point he will be tempted to help Cersei again, and Oathkeeper would remind him to keep his oath or something like that. But. Um then what do we okay we have long claw. Um long claw. I, I think I want staying with John. Well, okay, I, I have another sword for John, so I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh if John gets okay, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but I think Dawn goes to John because I think Dawn is light bringer. Um and I mean wait, 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 wait. Where are you? No, Dawn Dawn. Dawn, Dawn, Dawn. Dawn. Ah, the Dawn. one from the Starfell. Yeah, the one from House Dane that is carried by the Sword of the Morning, being yeah. Nightbringer. And yeah, I mean, he's been like, what, what, what Dane do we have? We have Ed, uh, Edric? Edric Dane. Yes, he's cool. He's a cool kid. Uh, he's not freaking, you know, like Sword of the Morning. Oh, uh, he's, he's 12. The... Yeah. Yeah, but the story is, I mean, like, they're, they're, he's not going to stay 12 to forever. Uh, but the story are going to end, you know, within the next two or three years. So, I don't know. Like, like two or three years, he'll be 15. Yeah, Rob well, was well, very good at 15. Yes, you're not going to make Edric uh, be a like, big enough character, you know, like, like Dawn has been so freaking hyped that he needs to, like, like, 
why hype that sword so much if nothing's come of it? Like, don't. Well, don't... I think I think it's more the sword of the morning that's been hyped more than the actual sword. Yeah, but the sword of the morning carries the actual sword that is dawn, that is light bringer, that I think needs to go to John. Reborn John. I don't know, but the way that they've said it, the whole the sword of the morning, that it has to be a Dane, it just it feels weird of it not being a Dane. No, oh, yeah. I mean I, I get it, but I I I Okay, what Dane do we have? Um God, I don't want to say it. so we have Edric, we have the Dark Star that is a like like lame poor house the at the the Dane from High Hermitage, right? And yeah, uh, Illyria. I think you could still no. I think you could still dawn at some point to make it like appear in the story again, but um, because yeah, I mean yes. Wow, dark start right. with dawn. That would be scary. Yeah, that would be very scary. But like yes, to like again, like that character, like we we want a narrative purpose for him. So it could be to still dawn to make it like out in the open again. But yeah, no, I don't know. Like to me, dawn. Lightbringer, John, Azorhai, pa pa pa, the White Walkers, you know, like so. To Longclaw, then I think it's going back to Jora. No. Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, no. Jora does not. Let's remind everyone that Jora does not have grayscale in the books, and no. you know, I think, I think, I think, like all, like full circle, like, forgiveness, and yeah. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. No. Oh, you have a lot no, of Mormons yeah. to go. Like you have a lot of key yes. cast Mormons women that Mormon uh, Mage Mormon. It should go to Mir to Mage Mormon, and if not, to Alasane. Well, they both. I mean, they're both like key cast girls that definitely deserve the sword. Like I totally agree. I it was a thousand think... times more than Jora. Jora mm -hmm. doesn't deserve to go back to the north. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. But a uh, you know redemption's arc. I can sometimes work in mysterious ways. No, but I agree with you. No, he doesn't. I mean, those girls deserve like, the sword a lot more than he does. But I love Mage. We should just give it to Mage. Okay. But or Daisy, if she hadn't died, I was so angry that she died. I I I don't want to I I don't want to upset you with that. I'm not that you know. I don't feel it that much. I I. I, 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 I see Jorah some, somehow for some reason reconnecting with the North, but but like, yeah. Um, I do have to admit, if, if the seventh book comes out and Jorah Mormont actually makes it alive and goes back to his family and rules Bear Island, I will scream. You will hear my scream everywhere in the world. I will make a rant in YouTube like it's never been seen of hatred and rage and injustice. And I will I will tear that book to pieces in front of the camera. Oh yeah, I want to see that. Well, you know, I wanna I, I'm gonna freaking do that if the end of the book is the White Walkers versus the dragon versus bah and the and the just like mega or Magadan battle. Like that would make me so angry. Like I've invested years of my life, you know, like literally like reading and rereading and studying that book. If that's the ending I get, the freaking dragons versus freaking white walkers, I'm gonna be very angry. So we both are and I'm party. gonna be so happy because that's what I want to see. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Like, like it, that could have been written in one book, you know, if that's where we had to go. Oh, I don't think it's gonna be the whole, the whole, the big ending. I think that's just gonna be a necessary thing to just finish them off completely because there are a lot of them, and just Dragonfire is very good to just get away but i don't think it's going to be like the main climax i just think it's going to be something that it's going to be necessary hmm. i don't think i also don't think it went through the whole trouble of seven bloody books just for the dragons and the white rockers to go in but i will be disappointed if there isn't at least a bit of dragons and white walkers in it. Because I also think that the dragon things are just very dangerous. There's a reason that the Targaryens lost all their dragons. They're bloody weapons of mass destruction. You cannot really fight a Targaryen if they have dragons. And I think that the white walkers is going to be a way that many of those dragons will die. Yeah. Maybe with some ice fighters or some ice dragons. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm still. I mean, I. I Tony made a really compelling point, but I. I'm still not sure I see Ice Dragons. But I, I've got to admit, I would love. This is just my wishes, of of my love for fantasy and Arya Stark. I want Arya to work one of those dragons. Mm-hmm. Do you imagine Arya Stark having control of one of those dragons? Uh, that would be it's so much fun. That would be horrible. Like she... I know, it's so awesome. <laughs> no, no, I want her to deal with her. Okay, no, I want her to. Her wolves, like her wolf, her pack. That's her thing. Like I don't see like like yeah, it would be like epically evil, but I don't know. Emotionally speaking, I want her to like like do things with her pack more. Yeah, oh, well, obviously her pack would be like the the closest thing. But for example, Dark Sister, the Blade Dark. I wanted to go to Arya. Oh yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree. Um, because Danny, come on, Danny doesn't fight. She's never learned. She's never had any interest. She she wouldn't know what to do with Dark Sister. Uh-huh. And she and Sansa always loved warrior woman. She, the reason why she called her wolf Nymeria about the the the, the Roy Dark Queen that. Dawn with a thousand ships, and and she also loved Rhaenys and Visenya, and how they rode on the dragons and the sword of Dark Sister. It's one of actually one of the things that I really liked that they did in the show, how they changed her con, how she had the conversations with Tywin. You know, and that one when she's talking, and and she obviously knows more about the Targaryen princesses than Tywin knows. And how she's talking and how she talks about that sword and that sword has to go to Arya. No, I agree. I agree. Plus, it was, I mean, it was, it's a woman's sword, so it makes sense. I mean, in the common people are discussing about, like, sunsetting a sword, which, I don't know, I don't, I don't, because you were saying, like, Danny doesn't know how to fight with a sword, which is true. And, uh, but, like, do you see Sansa? Uh, actually having a sword and sword fighting something? Tinker? Oh, I've lost Tinker. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue and hold on that question. I hope she joins us back soon because that wouldn't really be a clash of queens with only me. Um... Uh, so yes, I personally I don't really see to answer you guys in the comment. I don't really see Sansa wielding a sword in the story. Um, so I'm I'm not I'm not really sure. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try to continue and so I can rent. Okay, so Arsbane. Uh, that was the next one in the list. And I think Arsbane has to go to Sam the freaking Slayer. You know, he needs a Valerian steel sword. And that would be cool. Plus, I mean, I know that's a little bit of, the sh- of a show thing more than the book, Sam. But, but you know, like, um, is... Um, in the show is always like, yeah, yeah, me and Gilly, that's my girl. I'm going to protect my girl. Uh, this Sorry, is... I'm oh, back. You're back, you're back. I'm just finishing on Horsebane, and then I'll go back. So, yes, I was just saying that Horsebane um, is how Starly and 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 Sam is, is not only a, play, uh, a slayer, but he's also quite a player, you know, so I would like Horsebane <laughs> to go to Sam, who I think is going to, you know, like... His main role is going to be his knowledge. That's going to be his main weapon. But we've seen him use a weapon. I think he will use a weapon again. Although his main weapon is still going to be his knowledge on how to fry the White Walkers. I agree. I really want Sam to have heart pain. I also especially want him to have it because his father doesn't want him to have it. <laughs> oh, and yeah. he, and also the whole thing about him ending in the Night Watch was the fact that Rander Tarly didn't think that he was capable of being a warrior or being a leader. You know, if Randall Tarly is, or if you're a man, you have to be a warrior, you have to be strong. And if not, you're just not good for anything. And he sent him to the Night's Watch. And in the Night's Watch, he was forced to really grow up. Because really, he was, you know, when you're the son of a lord, you have everything. You don't have to fight for food. You don't have to work for clothes. Everything is kind of, 
given to you. You're so he never was really forced to do anything else except learn a lot. And that is very powerful weapon, learning. But in his father's eyes, it was not. And because he was in the night's watch and he was forced to go through such horrible things, he's become a completely different person, a very strong person. And I think he's he's getting to the point in which he's actually gonna be able to wield heart spin because at the very beginning it's true his father would not have been able to give him heart spin because he would have gotten that sword and he was like what the fuck do i do with this but this we're, we're getting to a whole different sound and i love the fact and i just the fact that he would get the sword that his father didn't want him to get is like the perfect fuck you randall tarley i don't like random tarley as it's probably very obvious and i really like sam because i just think he's awesome yeah He's awesome and adorable, and I just want to give him a hug. Having no, that father, poor kid. No, that's one thing I agree. I don't, I don't know a lot of Randall Tarley's fan, and I'm certainly not. Like he was just, just fucking horrible. So the question I was asking you before was: some people in the comments were talking about Sansa having one of those swords. Like I personally don't see Sansa wielding a sword in the at all. <laughs> No, at all. I don't. I don't like the idea of Sun. It's not that I don't like the idea of Sansa of the Sword, but I like. I like what he's done. The parallels of two sisters, two sisters that have different weapons, and how he shows that. One of the things that I like about George is that he doesn't show that there's only one way to being powerful. You know, it's not only the Lords that are powerful. Little Finger, look who where he came from, and he's very powerful. Look, Varys, where he came from, and look how high he's gotten. It's the whole. Everything is not just the soldiers or just the warriors. Everything is valid if it's if you really know how to use it well. And Sansa is clearly words, manipulations, the political power. That is, those are her weapons, and that's what she's very good at, and that's what she's being groomed by Littlefinger. Well, Arya has always been a little savage, which is what we like about her. And she, she wanted to learn how to fight. She didn't want the dresses. She, she cannot stand the politics. Like, one of the things is, is, if they would have ended in the opposite place, like Arya stuck in court and Sansa on the street, they would, neither of them would have survived. No, Arya would have gone herself killed in court and Santa wouldn't have survived in the streets for like three days. They just wouldn't because each person has their weapons and to try to give someone a weapon that doesn't belong to it just no. No. I, I like the idea of Sansa being the great master manipulator and Arya being the the deadly vicious assassin that will kill all of Sansa's enemies. I think they would make a great team. You know, if if Sansa ends up ruling Winterfell, I can just see the two sisters ruling. Sansa will be the the ruler, the one who you know talks to the lords and, and gets the lords to do whatever. And then she just sends Arya with her armies, or just Arya to kill people left and right. Yeah, that would, they would make a great team. Ruling. Pretend yeah. to be good and negotiate, and then kill. Send your sister on secret missions to kill people left and right. Come on, they would be a fantastic team. Yeah, yeah, of, of murderers. <laughs> hey, that's the world that George has written. They've just adapted. Okay. Um, uh, the phrase okay. deserve to be murdered. Yeah. So do the Boltons. The phrase deserve to be... And the Greyjoys. Except I, Asha. I don't know about the Greyjoys. It's complicated. I like uh, really? Yeah, but... Aaron Greyjoy deserves not to die? Uh, Aaron or Euron? Oh, I hate the, the bloody names. They're yeah. too similar. The dumb pair? No, the other one. The one the the, the the one who has the ship, the silence, and they're all mutes. Oh, I don't know. Utter yeah. bastard. I don't know what, he's, uh, what has he done that was so horrible so far. Apart from pillaging, raping, and killing for absolute years, apart from making every single crew member in the ship mute so they do not talk, apart from uh, wanting to take over the Seven Kingdoms, which means reaping and raping and killing and pillaging, do I really need to give more excuses? That's just your usual Sunday. Yeah. That doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve to die horribly and painfully and terribly. It so does Victorian. 
yeah, but I don't like Victorian, so I'm okay with Victorian dying. Like I, 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 I don't care for him one bit. No, he just yes, okay, I agree, but <sighs> I don't like the motto. The motto of they're just weavers and pirates and raping and pillaging and killing and taking women. No, down with the Aran Islands, burn them down. Arya, you love Arya. She has killed a lot of. She has killed some people that were unleashed. She has also killed some innocent people. She's a freaking psychopathic murderer and she's only eight years old. You cannot be so lenient with Arya and then so cruel for anyone else who does bad things. Like, it's different. Yeah. It's different. Arya's a little girl in desperate situations. She's now being brainwashed by some death cult. It's very different. I think she's eventually gonna. And the majority of the people that he's that she's killed are are soldiers and killers and bad people. Yeah, we're not talking faceless men today, but the the you know that death cult that yes, yeah, faceless men are a death cult. But they're telling her, you know, like like killing is sort of a ritual, and you do it like like for a reason, not to, not you don't kill to appease your anger. And she totally disregards that and does it in a horrible way. So they're not brainwashing her that much. Well, she, the last guy that she killed, he really deserved it. He was on her list. Yeah, and, every, and everyone on her list, there's a reason they're on her list. And, and yeah, okay, I'm just... And she killed those two guys when she was in Iron Hill to escape because God knows what about happened to her. The majority of the people that she's killed has been survival. Yeah, That's but, very different. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have an army of reavers that go around pillaging and raping innocent people just because they can. She does it because she needs to survive. She's all alone. A little girl without family. Very difficult situation. It's not also the act, but sometimes the, the reasons behind it. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hello? We seem to be having some technical issues again. I'm sorry, everyone. And where is sweet? Okay, let's see if I can get sweet back online. Huh. Okay. So, can you guys still hear me? Okay, yes, I seem to be online, but where is Anne? I swear to God, we really are cursed. This is, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Yep, so it's just, just me right now. Yes, okay. Let's see. Let's get on. I'll, I'll keep doing it myself. <laughs> this is just, okay, this is fun. Okay, we talk about Widow's Way, Oathkeeper. I still think that they're, they're going back to the Starks, and they should go back to the Starks. Longclaw, okay, to the ladies. Not to, I will not mention him. He's gonna die. A uh, heart pain, of course. A uh, dark sister. Oh, Blackfire. Blackfire. This is the one that I'm not a hundred percent sure. I wanted to go to Aegon mainly because I want Aegon to be the real Aegon. Uh, 
But the whole thing is that I don't know if he's going to be the real Akon. And there's a lot of people that have told me that they believe 100% for sure that he's just a Blackfire, it, not a real Targaryen. Although, Don Will actually really likes the idea that it would be a Blackfire and not a real Targaryen. And also, that would also wouldn't be bad, but it does, it's since he's not in the show, it looks like he's gonna not, not be a big part, or maybe he's not gonna be very important. But I think I, I think it really should go to Aegon because really, who else is it gonna go? It's not gonna go to Danny because Danny doesn't fight. Uh, it's not gonna go to John because John already has too many bloody swords. He's Aster Ahai, I believe it. He's gonna get a Lightbringer. He already gets. He already has one of the swords, Longclaw. Like. What is he going to be around? Carrying like three different swords? Like, is he going to be one of those, uh, you know, uh, Game Boy or PlayStation uh, characters when she's carrying one sword, then another sword, another? Blackfire just to fight certain battles, then Long Claw just to fight others, and then uh, Lightbringer to fight the Warp Walkers. It would just be ridiculous. Uh, then, and there's no really any other Targaryens to go to. There's also the theory that Tyrion might be a might be a Targaryen. I'm not I'm really I don't go for that theory. But really even if he was, he wouldn't be able to really wield a sword. So he so it has to be Aegon. It has to be Aegon. Uh, what do you guys think? Since I have no one else to discuss this with, I'm going to be talking to you guys down in the chat. Okay, Helen May. Then he has to reveal the Murmur's Dragon, so Blackfire should go back to House Salgarian somehow. Well, well, the Blackfires technically are were a part of the Targaryen house, like really are the bastards of House Targaryen. So if Aegon is a Blackfire, it 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 stays in the Targaryen bloodline. So exactly, Helen May Blackfire is really bigger than Tyrion. Tyrion wouldn't really be able to to wield Blackfire. So even if he was, which I don't believe. I don't believe, I want him to be the son of Tywin. I know that a lot of people think. Uh, I agree with every single word that comes out of things, Matt. Thank you very much, Christina. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I really want Tyrion to be the son of Tywin. I know that there's going to be, if if Sweet manages to get back <laughs> and talk about the, the Tyrion question, uh, see, Lady Sansa, I'm with you. I'm also not buying Tyrion the Sucker. And there's been a lot of mentions that he was the the son, the son, the the real son of Tywin. He's they're the one that he, they're always saying that. Yes, I know about the eyes, but really, uh, Jenna, remember Tywin's uh, sister? She was like he, uh, telling to Jamie that he was really the son of Tywin, that in personality he was the real son, not Jamie, that Jamie was more like Carrion. So, see, going with Jenna Lannister, she, she, knows, she knows her family, and I really wanted that the kid's real blood son killed him. I really kind of like that. So, okay, swords. Don, I don't believe that Don is Lightbringer. I'm not with Sweet with that. So, I think Don should really go to Edric Dane. I would kind of like it to Edric Dane, you know, would become someone later on. I really like the story of the, the sword, uh, the sword of. The Sword of the Morning. I, I really like. I, I'm looking really forward to see what happens in the Tower of Joy, with all of that and seeing him. But I would really like to have another big Sword of the Morning, important someone. I don't think he's going to be Lightbringer. I, I don't think it matches the prophecy, and also Don hasn't really appeared as of now. So, Blackfire, Aegon, Dark Sister, Arya. It really, and I kind of love the name, and she really is the dark sister. She really is the, the, the dark sister. She even has the darker hair, the one with, like, the darker past. So, why 
don't you think it's a light bringer? It's just... Hey, Tinker, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You're back. Uh, we have big, big technical problems right now, guys. Uh, I can still not see you. Okay, uh, Sweet has come back. I still cannot see you in the chat. Yeah, just hold on a second. We have a big problem. Okay, we're having some big technical problem, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I told you. We are cursed. Yes, I'm sorry, guys. We're going to have to go. Uh, I'm very sorry because we might not even... Uh, we have uh, we had some problems. We might not even get the recording of this video right, so we're gonna have to go. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, they, they say that they understand. Oh, Lady Sansa, yes, they can see you and hear you. Then why can't I see you and hear you in the video? Oh well. So no deal. We have to go. Yeah, I'm. I'm very, very sorry. Um, yes, I'm very sorry. Tinker will try to reconnect. Uh, we'll just both leave the chat and think. And Tinker, I'll call you back right afterwards. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, we'll keep the fourth question for later. That was a. That was a good question about Saivas um, that I cannot access right now. So, okay. Hey, well, at least we were here for a little while. It yeah, was and fun. I, hope, I hope you can see the video afterwards. We did three questions out of four. It was only two of us that got everything that happened. Hey, it wasn't so bad. And at least people seem to have been entertained while we were here. Did you guys enjoy yourselves? <laughs> 